It's Friday, September 4th, 2015. This is Wes Fryer with a technology tip video for this week. And today we're going to talk about ransomware, backups, and Google Drive. And I hope this will encourage you, if you're not already, to take several proactive steps to protect yourself in the event of a computer disaster, which actually happened this week in more public schools. This past Wednesday on September 3rd, this article was on the Oklahoma City News 9 website, Virus Hits More Public Schools Computer Systems, and as you read the article, you will hear or read words like malware and cyber extortionists and hostageware or ransomware. And you may not have heard of this, and it's something I have been hearing about on technology podcasts and reading about in the last six to eight months, and it is real, it is not a myth, and we need to personally and individually, as well as organizationally, be doing things to try and protect ourselves against something like this happening. So what is ransomware? Well, ransomware is software that is written by uh, someone who is trying to do malicious bad things. Basically, they're trying to hold your data hostage. And so I heard in the case of the more public schools incident, it was a teacher who opened a PDF file from a website and that released software, which not only locked up her or his, I don't know the gender of the individual, but that person's data, uh, but it also got onto their network and affected their network shared folders. So it was really kind of a nightmare situation. And the latest things that I have heard on tech podcasts is that law enforcement has little to no, little little options, few options of what they can do to help in this kind of situation other than, say, erase your computer and restore from a backup. Um, or you could pay the ransom, but that's not a good idea you know, either. So what is it that we can do? How can we protect ourselves? And yes, there are things that we should already be doing, but if we're not, we need to be doing these things to protect ourselves against the possibility of having a laptop stolen, having a hard drive crash, or having some kind of malicious software infect our files, or heaven forbid, even all the network files at our school where, you know, we're not able to restore things. And, and hopefully that wouldn't be the case. We have, you know, backups. But anyway, what are things that we can do? If you are not already creating regular backups of your laptop data, you need to be doing that. And this involves both the device or place where you have the backup saved and also the service that you use to make the backup. You know, in the not too distant past, we were saving things to CDs and DVDs. Um, now we have external hard drives and external, you know, USB thumb drives, but we've also got the cloud and the ability to save to server computers that aren't even located in our physical location, whether that's our house or in our school organization. So I'm going to talk about a few of these options. So three basic options I would encourage you to check out, and this is in sort of ascending order of expense. First one would be a USB thumb drive. Literally last night at Best Buy, I, I bought a USB drive for one of my daughters. It was a, and is a 32 gigabyte drive, and it cost $11. So it was less than a dollar per gigabyte. Just a few years ago, we were paying, I was paying $100 for a gigabyte of external storage. So it's really amazing amazing how fast this has changed. Now, USB thumb drives or, or you know, um, uh, USB sticks are, are relatively volatile, meaning, you know, it's, it's not super secure. You could have a magnet run over, you know, touch it or whatever, and that can mess up the data. You know, it can obviously get lost. Um, you know, they can go bad, but that is a low cost way to back up your stuff. And, you know, at a bare minimum, I encourage you to do that, to back up all your files regularly onto, onto a USB drive. Second choice would be an external hard drive. And if you look for one to Today, you probably want to find one um, that is USB 3.0. That means it's going to be faster. Um, if you are a Mac user, you could look for one that is a Thunderbolt because our newer Mac laptops have Thunderbolt ports, which is a very fast transfer um, technique or method protocol, and it replaced FireWire. At the, at the top end of this, I would recommend, if, if you're willing, to invest getting at home something called an airport time capsule. And what this is, is a Wi-Fi hotspot and router that you plug your high-speed internet into at home. 
but it also has a built-in hard drive for backups and you can configure your computer to automatically back up anytime you are online and and you know I think you have to usually be plugged into power but it can just happen transparently in the background continually and really that's that's the best way for backups to to be set up so let's talk a little bit about the software that you'll use I don't know that my icon here is the best for manual labor but what I was trying to show is that if you use something like a thumb drive you will need to manually you know drag those files over and and do the backup process you're gonna have to not only remember how to do it or remember to do it you're going to have to do it uh, and you know we live busy lives and so that is not the optimal method uh, to just drag the files over you can do it that way and it's the cheapest way but it's not optimal I would recommend option two which is time machine and you can then specify this is free software on all of our Mac laptops um, and it allows you to specify an external hard drive or if you have like a time capsule at your house it can automatically every day every week whatever your in interval is uh, back up your stuff and it takes a while for all these backups the first time but then after that they, they go quicker because it just does an incremental backup of the files that have changed. The third option is a cloud-based option. This works on whatever computer you have, Windows or, or Macintosh or Apple. Carbonite is one option. Uh, it's the one my parents actually use. And you have to pay for that, but it is a, a monthly fee and, and there's software that you install and then you can back up your devices to the cloud and then if you need to restore them, and this was this works for, you know, would work for a fire too, right? If you just backed up at your house and you had a fire and your hard drive was burned up, you know, your data is gone. But if you back up to the cloud with a service like Carbonite, that's really the most secure option. So, I, I'm not endorsing Carbonite as you know the number one service. There's a lot of different services. I know my parents use it and they've been happy with it. But something like that is a very um, good option if you're looking for a backup option. So we are in the midst of a transition between time when IT departments provided home drives or H drives for all users to now where more data and more information is saved on the cloud and we certainly are doing this at our school as a Google Apps for Education school we still do provide home drives and home folders for users on campus but we are encouraging people to share on the cloud and to save on the cloud and so that's what I'd like to end with here basically is encouraging you that as you do your work go ahead and save on Google Drive rather than just saving on your local computer this is the first thing I thought of when I saw this article about ransomware and more public schools this week was gosh I hope a lot of those teachers you know had saved their work on the cloud on Google Drive because Google has multiple redundancies with multiple servers and there's a there's a high probability that we're not going to have any data loss when stuff is saved to Google Drive so I guess this is the final slide be prepared and and be careful and when I say be careful we do need to watch out for attachments we open even links that we open um, I heard that the file that had caused the more public schools ransomware infection was actually a PDF file that a teacher had opened, which was, you know, just so hard. And, and unfortunately, these kinds of incidents are part of our landscape. And, you know, I don't want to make you paranoid and just saying, oh, gosh, I'm not going to open anything anybody sends me. I'm not saying that. But be careful and be prepared. And so by backing stuff up, we can be prepared. Also, I won't go into this in detail, but if you are not using a password manager now, like 1Password, it's a free one available for Windows, or for, sorry, for iPad and iPhone, um, you need to be doing that. And, and I'll probably do a whole other session talking about that. But that's one place where you put your passwords, use secure passwords, and then you'll have that spot where you can always look them up when you need to use them. So if you'd like to access more videos like this, I'm going to be continuing to create these. And you can visit our support website for Cassidy Schools, support.cassidy.org. Thanks for watching.